Okay, hey, hello guys, uh, ladies. Um, welcome to our presentation today. Um, I'm titled at Breaking the Code for Product Specifications and Market Dominance. Uh, so thank you for taking time out of your day. I know everybody's busy. I'm gonna try to teach you a little bit about um, how to get your building products specified in the marketplace. So let's talk about breaking the code. I'm guessing for a lot of you, uh, this really isn't your first rodeo in the building product specifications. Um, I wanna mention to you that if you've failed maybe in the past at reaching your potential uh, to get product specs, um, it's really not your fault. Um, that's the reason for that is there's a lot to learn on how to get your product specified, which I'm gonna discuss with you today. And there's also a lot of confusing information out in the marketplace. And, and a lot of the people in, in the industry really don't know about things like lead, uh, that can be overwhelming. So many times I say there's an information overload that keeps you from your success, that's okay. We're gonna talk about how to move forward on that. So if you've been concerned in the past and you're having problems getting your product specified with the architects and the engineers, I'm gonna put some of these fears to rest today. Uh, you can actually do this. Some people think they can't, but you can do this successfully. You just need to um, have the right person sitting in front of you, you having the best information to explain your, your products and your attributes to them. And so that's what's really gonna uh, get you in the Office Master specifications. So one of the things I deal with all the time is competitors, right? So the competitors are out there, some of them are big corporations, and believe me, they're flush with capital. They've got plenty of resources to fight against you. Uh, they're gonna, every time they see you in the marketplace, they're gonna say, hey, you can't succeed, uh, but we're gonna prove them wrong, okay? So uh, they have their own reasons for wanting you to think that, but none of that's true. Uh, you have a reason to go forward and try to get your product spec. So, Really, how do you get your product specified? Um, that's why we're here today. Uh, I know you wanna increase your presentation, uh, numbers that you give and get into more office specs, succeed at what you're doing. So I'm gonna try to tell you some of the things that's worked for me over the last 40 years um, in the marketplace with architects. And so how does that sound? So when I put this presentation together, I really had two types of people that um, I was focusing on. One is there's some beginners out there, there are neophytes in the market, there are people that are uh, trying to understand the construction process with uh, contractors calling on job sites, uh, putting out uh, technical fires, uh, working with architects, engineers, contractors, subcontractors. It's a mess out there. You have to have a blueprint on how you're going to reach out to these decision makers if you really want to get your product spec. So the other group I like to think about is uh, I call them the experienced veteran. So there's some really advanced tools I'm gonna to talk in the second half of this webinar um, to give you some tools that maybe you hadn't thought about to get actually into the architect's offices, which is really tough to do today because uh, uh, still 60% uh, of them are working remote. So when I put the press presentation together, I just wanna let everybody know there's something here for everybody. And really what I want to happen in this is uh, for people is to go from zero to hero. That's a, a phrase I use all the time and that's what's gonna happen after this today for you. So really the presentation today is, 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 is easy to understand. Um, really the only way for you to break into the product specialist specification market and dominate your marketplace is to use what I call the initials ASP. So what is the ASP? So it's really, the Architectural Specifications Program. It's a one-of-a-kind program. Um, it's very cost-effective. Um, it's gonna get you in front of the architects where they can uh, take your product and put them in the, the, your three-part specs in their project manual. Uh, there's other programs in the marketplace um, that can help you do this to a certain extent. Some of them are like the lead generation services like uh, Dodge or CMD. Uh, you have CE courses you're out presenting. Uh, there's product databases, there's people like RCAT that um, have uh, catalogs and online resources, uh, BIM objects. All, all these things can work together to increase your specs. But there's only one program that puts all, all together, kind of combines them all, and gives you a lot more uh, spec opportunities. So I guess the question I'd tell you is like, um, why should you listen to me? Uh, and I'm going to tell you some ideas why you might want to. To, I built this architectural specification program process uh, starting in, in really before 1985 when I actually started my own company to do it. 
So uh, in 1985, I decided to leave a, a very large manufacturer in the concrete accessories business. I was their sales and marketing manager and then ended up being their merger manager also. And so in the process of these years, I literally have worked with over a thousand building product manufacturers to build um, specialized or um, uh, specific uh, product processes so that they could they can get in the specs. So I created everything on your screen there. Um, Ron Blank and Associates, um, my architectural specification team and our main website for continuing ed. Green CE based in Portland, Oregon is our sustainable company where we deal with um, lead documents, uh, health product declarations, product category rules, environmental product declarations, and anything to do with sustainability, lead, USGBC, all those things uh, are run out of that office in Portland. The C Academy, as you know, we do this. I'm just going to tell you, I hate to get in talk about the companies because it's really this is to tell you how to get spec, but that company, we have about 50 live events a year. And we have about, um, uh, I think we did 28 web series this year for manufacturers. InfoSpec is all the launch learns. We administer all the, the uh, reporting for about 300 different building product manufacturers that really they don't they do lunch and learns but they don't want to have to report to like 20 different organizations like AIA, USGBC, RCEP, IDCC, all those um, alphabet companies and then Spec Shaman is our really consulting company where we do a lot of rep training where we have uh, video uh, training for people that are starting out in the business how to call on architects uh, what what is lead all about we have a two-hour video on that so um, those are the companies plus I used to own Specs Plus, which was the largest master specification uh, company and master spec bought that out. So um, how did I build this uh, company uh, to help building product manufacturers? Well, my, my story actually started back in the 70s. I was working for a company called the Burke Company. It's now called Meadow Burke. Uh, we were a leader in the time for all kinds of concrete forms, anything to do with concrete for power plants, bridges, tilt wall. Uh, precast concrete projects. Uh, when I started in that business out of college, I can tell you I didn't know anything. Really, I got recruited by this company and I had to do just what all of you did. I just learned from the basics uh, going up and taking, having people take me under their wings and try to teach me that business. I knew nothing about construction. I was never in the construction industry uh, when I, before I got out of college. I I'd never called on an architect. I never called on an engineer. I didn't know how specs were developed. But here's what happened with me. I was a hard worker. And like all of you guys, you're hard workers. And I had an appetite to learn all this, um, all this stuff and learn how to read plans and just how these projects were put together. So really, I, want, I just wanted to learn how to succeed. So in the process, you know, I started out sales, sales manager, account manager, national account manager, national sales manager. And I just, I just worked my way up. But in the process of this, I try to learn along the way about everything about how to design hotels, office buildings, commercial buildings, uh, airports, you know, convention centers, schools, all these kind of projects. And basically, um, th with the company, I was working mainly in Texas at the time in the beginning. And I went out to seven states when I got my own company and then we went uh, national. So what I found out was, is that I, I was struggling in every position I had to try to figure out how to get to the next level, if that makes sense. What's that, what's that quantum leap I've got to take to make my management happy about what I'm doing? And, and number one, how to increase my sales. But on the other side of that scales of justice, if you put them there, I had a family at home, right? So I've got a wife, got a young family. I've got, I've got a young daughter and son, and I'm traveling a lot and I want to be successful in what I do. Uh, uh, you know, so how do I, how do you do that? You guys have, have that, to deal with too. How do you balance your family and then your business where you want to try to get specified? So really, I had to figure out in the beginning, um, how, how do products get specified? Um, all we did with Burke was call on contractors. Uh, I would go out and sell any kind of concrete, accessory, chemical, forming system, uh, directly uh, job shacks uh, with the contractors. They were my low hanging fruit. Uh, you know, you drive out, see the contractor, make your presentation get a sale and then your people deliver it, right? So my team used that strategy for years. Uh, we rarely, rarely called on architects only when we needed to make a, a substitution or an equal and uh, get submitted by the contractor to be on the project. 
And what we found out is uh, our competition was killing us uh, because they had architectural reps and uh, we started losing some of the bigger jobs that we needed to hit our sales goals. And so things weren't working for me, really. Um, I was, maybe my goals were too high, but I, I wanted to get those big jobs too. So I had an epiphany one day and I said, you know what, all those guys, I'm always seeing in the project manuals, they're all in the specs. How come we're not in the specs? I didn't, I didn't know. And so um, I hired uh, my previous boss, Don Linsky, real polished guy. And I said, Don, I'm gonna give you seven states. There's three products I want you to take out that we need to, to build up our sales on and call on architects. Uh, you know, Every other week, I want you to go call on 25 architects, set up the appointments and let's see what happens. So really, um, that was a game changer for the company because we started noticing being in more project manuals in about six months. But the time a year and two years came, we were all over the specs, right? So in the 70s and 80s, when, when I started this program and I was learning myself about how to do it, this was totally revolutionary. Today, it's obvious you have to do that. In the 70s and 80s, calling on architects as a building product manufacturer was something nobody ever did, right? Very few people did it. So I told my guys, I said, instead of you just doing sales all the time, I want you to call on architects, which call on the engineers when we have to. But there's guys over there called spec writers or the specifiers, and there's other decision makers, influencers, and in these architect firms. So how do we get in, reach them, get the product specified, or at least influence the specification to use um, one of our products? So I devised a system back in the 80s. Uh, my team today, you know, um, you know, 40 years later, we're still using that. We've refined it along the way, but it's really simple, it's effective. And so all these things are th things that you're doing and you just want to do a little bit better and that's build name recognition for your brand. I can tell you that there's a lot of companies that come to me that have really, really super good products. The only thing is, believe it or not, is that no, they, they never tell the architects about it. So nobody ever specifies them. So the other one, education of the design professional, not only about the benefits of your products through sales calls, but, but uh, it, with the architect, it's actually going in and if you can do your lunch and learns um, or have continuing education online to educate them about your applications. Okay, the other one is really is identifying the project projects. And so that's like I said, CMD uh, through BIM and the specs, uh, BIM, BIM objects. Um, there's a lot of companies out there that can identify projects for you as well as the ones you locate when you go in and talk to the architect directly. And ultimately, you're going to get in the office master specifications when they accept that product. So really, when you look at those three things, it looks pretty simple, doesn't it? So really, it looks simple, but it's how you implement it. That's what uh, the, the bottom line is in this. It's like, use these three key strategies, I call them, and it's going to make all, all the difference in the world for you. This is very true. Architects don't fill out purchase orders. I actually don't want to go into the story, but uh, one of my friends who was an architect rep for a quartz surfacing material, out of Spain, they actually got fired because they called him in and said he wasn't getting any purchase orders or sales from the architects. That just shows a company that doesn't understand how the market works in the United States. So what I had, I was lucky. I had 120 direct salespeople working for me. We called on, uh, basically on contractors. I had some guys who were really good about working with architects, some that weren't so good. And they were the ones that were really getting our product spec in the project manual. So my key, um, uh, I guess, uh, way for them to go forward was I said, look, you have to really, you have to build confidence with the architect. And one of my favorite spec writers of all time, Tim Kirby, told me, he said, he said, friends, he, he only he only specified products from his friends, right? Like I go in and see him and say, I only specify with friends. So you need to be a friend with them and you need to be to their go-to guy because an architect doesn't fill out a purchase order. So I've trained all my, all the people and thousands of people and different building product companies either in going to going and doing them. I've done uh, sales training for 120 people. I've gone in and do one for 26 reps. I just got asked by another company to come into their national sales meeting as a umbrella. They got 42 companies under I'm gonna go try to help their people that are mainly independent reps understand what I'm talking with you about today. So I'm, I try to tell them uh, they need to be a resource the architect. So and w instead of waiting until the bidding or negotiation phase, I teach them that you go in and call the architects during the design development and they call it CD or construction documents phase. So by doing that, you get in there early. I found that the building products are, are they're getting more jobs. 
they're getting more specifications and um, the other thing it does it, it uh, makes you successful so you can have a, a happy family life at home so when I had these 120 reps I had 38 branches in the US Canada you know everything was going great I can tell you uh, just t just taking that bull by the horns everything was great but I can tell you after a couple of years I hit a wall that's what I call it man I went right straight into the wall so I, I, I couldn't figure out why in the beginning and I, I tried to later on I figured out and, and I wanted to take all these strategies I developed um, with with the, the few architectural reps in our company and I wanted to take them nationwide so I wanted everybody to be in the same process, do the same thing every time they've been successful, use, a, use successful techniques so that every uh, uh, man and woman in the company, we had a lot of women in, that were in sales in the company, um, they'd be trained to work directly with the architect instead of relying solely on these contractors and going to job sites. I tried to explain this to my management at my company that ran the company and I, man, I hit a brick wall, I wanna tell you. Um, they were CPAs, they were uh, lawyers that uh, owned the company, and they didn't want to invest in any kind of education, basically for my staff or especially to the architects. And I didn't agree with them on this. I tried to change them. I did, but it was a long road. And what I found out, first of all, is education is is the most critical way, to, the most crucial way to get your product spec. And you just have to get your management team, if they don't understand that, to go along with you to get that done. So I was frustrated, I was disappointed, I kind of ran into this wall. Um, these spec strategies that I created uh, were working for my company and I decided um, that I wanted to, um, I wanted to share them with other building product companies. And I wanted to get other talented people like you to see the potential in using these strategies and not just work with contractors. You know, I'm an entrepreneur, obviously, with all those companies, and probably a lot of you would like to start your companies if you don't have one, which is uh, awesome because uh, it, you either make it or you don't make it, and every decision you make is your own. And one day, I was thinking, and I just kind of had like an epiphany. I said, in order for me to make the income I need, which I was making really good money at the top of that company, but I wanted more than that, I said, I have to quit. After quitting my job, I have to start my own company. I had to share all these uh, spec secrets that I learned by being out in the field and doing it myself and developed over the years. But I'm gonna tell you what, it's a huge risk. You don't take that lightly. Like it's like, I'm gonna ask my wife, cause she's, she's part of my team or she is the team really. I'm just on her team. Um, she, I, I needed to make her happy about moving on from the status quo, if you want to call that, because I had a really great paying job. I had benefits and profit sharing and company cars at the top of the company. And I went home and I told her about this and she didn't like it. Okay. So um, she liked job stability. She liked my work schedule. I was only traveling two to three days a week. So that was okay with her. So then I had, to, after telling her, I had to ask myself, what's going to happen if I quit this job, start a new company? Um, I didn't have a whole lot of money, I had some money in the bank, but you know, my parents, they weren't entrepreneurs, right? They'd never start a company. My dad was chief of psychology for the army and my mom worked for the Boy Scouts of America. Um, they weren't people that are going to start up companies, right? They weren't going to take risks because they're not innovators. So what, what are the risks for me if I just quit my job one day, start a business? What if I fail? What if I run out of money? And really, more important than that is, what is my wife and family going to think about me? So, um, before I left my job at Burke, I, I tried to find as much of a bulletproof plan as I could to succeed. I wrote it out. Uh, it was very, very risky. Um, I started thinking about having a partner to come in and defray the cost and do part of the workload because I was pretty ambitious about, you'll see over here on the slide, about what I wanted to do. So I reached out to a friend of mine, uh, Johnny Peden, who was a glass rep at the time, a real successful glass rep. And I pitched him my plan at lunch, and this is what I told him. I, and this is in 1985. Johnny, I want to visit 1,100 AEC firms uh, annually. I want to go into their offices. Um, I, want to, um, I want to make our product presentations for several companies. And... That's just what I think it's gonna to do to get people to sign up for this. And what happened was, as you'll see later, is uh, I traveled coast to coast for uh, 12 years in the beginning. 
Um, I was uh, gone 40 to usually 38 to 42 weeks a year. My number one year was 1995. I was actually away from my family for 45 weeks, making uh, architectural calls and doing marketing calls. Actually, I loved it. I didn't like being away from my my home and my family, but I liked being in the architect's office. I'm probably one of the few people in the country that likes that on a daily basis, but I actually loved it. And um, so today, I don't know, even most people don't even make 500 calls annually, but um, back then I used to try to make a 900 to 1100. So the other thing was, it's like, I got to travel coast to coast to dozens of cities. We started out with a few regions and states. Uh, eventually, uh, we were in every major market in the country. I was traveling Monday through Friday, 40 weeks out of the year. And one of the things I wanted to do was distribute samples and brochures. So um, today, um, we're an Apple developer. We have our own proprietary software. We present uh, product technologies to specifiers. Uh, but back in the day, you know, we used to carry um, uh, cases uh, with wheels on them that had samples and brochures to leave at the offices, and we would update libraries. And it was difficult sometimes because you're in the rain or you're going to a skyscraper in New York City, whatever. It was tough. Uh, but really, that's what it took to get the, the job done. The main thing was for, uh, representing multiple product lines. So instead of just doing Burke's products now, we wanted to start out and depending on the city that the building product manufacturer signed up for, we'd have mainly sometimes between five to eight different product lines we were taking in. Uh, I didn't want to be confined to one uh, CSI division. Um, so we had everything from uh, glass to, um, you know, Acme brick to uh, uh, paints, uh, concrete sealers, whatever. And we had to make a separate presentation for each one and have different specification strategies for each one. Uh, but that was the only way that we could get all these products in the office master specifications. A big decision I made up front was to accept no commissions. Okay, uh, independent reps. I was an independent rep for a while. Yes, we accepted commissions, but I wanted to work on a retainer basis. And I, I wanted to do that for several reasons. I wanted to do it because I wanted to have a steady cash flow coming in to pay for all the traveling expenses and my family's expenses that, that we had. And I didn't want to have to wait to sell one or two big jobs every year to get a big commission check, right? And what I found out sometimes, like when I work, did a lot of work for PPG, is some of the big glass uh, buildings where I sold all the glass on it or Spectrum Glass, 11-story building, it's like those commissions would have paid for my services for 10 or 20 years. But I still like having the consistent money coming in, like a paycheck like you do every month. Um, when it's high enough, you're happy. So that's really what differentiated me from being an independent rep in the beginning. Um, and finally, I wanted really more than anything to have an honest and ethical practice, have a, have a, um, have people that could depend on me, know I'm going to do what I'm going to be uh, promising them to do, be transparent. That's one thing I'm really good about being, I think, is I'm transparent, open, not only with the, um, the building product manufacturer, with the design professionals and clients. So, you know, I try to make friends out of them, have integrity, and man, I can tell you more than anything that's paid off through the years. Hey, look at this slide. This is awesome, right? Hey, this is what I had to deal with in 1985, right? In the 90s, and sometimes uh, getting close to early the 2000s. Um, man, these are tools, sales tools from the Stone Age, believe it or not. So this is what we used in, in the 80s and 90s uh, to do business. So, you know, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have email, websites, no smartphones. Uh, I used to use a paper map. We didn't have GPS maps, try to do that. And I find 25 architects in a week in the city. Uh, I couldn't just say, hey, Siri, and get something done. I couldn't Google anything. Um, we didn't have any of the modern tools we have today, but we still made progress uh, getting our product specified and, and using those specif specification opportunities to get in the project manuals. So really what happened was um, after I quit Burke, um, I started this new ASP program with my business partner, Johnny. Uh, my wife didn't like it. Um, she was nervous. I wasn't receiving a regular paycheck and um, she didn't have health insurance. I'm thinking back about all the things I had ch challenges with her and I didn't always get a check on the 1st and 15th. So my business really started out small. We only had a few clients, but really within about six months, uh, Johnny and I were off and running, basically from our reputations and our previous businesses, people trusted us. And so those clients were really happy that they were getting specified um, and I was paying my bills. So that was a big plus for me. 
So um, one of the things I want to talk to you about that's real important for your career is uh, joining the local CSI chapter and, and AI chapter as an affiliate when you can. Um, I ended up taking the CD, uh, CDT um, exam um, to get my credential on that certified document technologist. Um, I've had it for over 42 years. I think I've been a CDT for 42 years now. So um, when I'm not on the road, which is I'm on the road a lot, is uh, I'll still to this day, I try to stay in touch with my CSI buddies, uh, AIA buddies, obviously, because we're um, a provider for them and I look for any specification opportunities I can for my clients. So education is a big part of our company. It should be part of yours. So I would say if you don't do anything else with organizations, join the local CSI chapter. You know, um, uh, you can go online to, I think it's csiorg.net. Uh, uh, go to, go to check in with your AI chapter. There are USGBC chapters um, that deal with uh, more like lead, lead uh, specifications and make that, make that a priority, not only for you, but if you manage uh, the reps or sales in your company, you need to get all those guys um, and gals going to those meetings. It's very, very important to stay in touch with the design community. Okay, so in my company, what happened in the ASP program, uh, we had a really good first year, second year was, was okay. And then um, my my partner, Johnny, decided he wanted to go back to be an independent rep. And so I was, uh, we talked it out. He's still one of my best friends, but uh, I was traveling 40 weeks out of the year. He wasn't traveling that much. And uh, so I was doing the heavy lifting. So we parted ways as friends. I was back at square one again. How was I going to travel the whole country and get this job done that I told him I was going to do for my billing product uh, clients? I want to cut short kind of my, my story here, but it would have been easy to shut down the business, go back, and I could get a job easily in any BPM company. Um, my wife was nervous about what was going on. I was solo at the time. I had uh, some kids I was trying to, to feed. And um, so um, I decided to stick it out. I didn't have a business partner. I didn't have uh, that much money in the bank. and But I had enough clients to keep going. How was I going to make this work? So the things about the ASP that, that made me uh, feel comfortable work is the specification program I'm going to talk to you about in the next few slides. It works for almost any building product. Just like it says here, it increases spec opportunities, generates a lot of leads, a lot of project leads. It saves money. It's really cost effective, um, builds trust with the specifier. I don't have to read this to you, but mainly it increases your return on investment uh, for all the effort you put in to get specified. So. You know, I stayed the course. I'd get on a plane Monday morning. Um, I set up a schedule a year in advance where I was going to go and I let the spec, spec writers know I was coming. I'd go make these calls every year. I think if I look back, it's probably like climbing Mount Everest, right? I just uh, started out. I didn't know if I could make it. I, I would make it, but it was really, it was really tough. And as I did this traveling, I also made sales calls and then um, people would, I talked to them at trade shows. And I ended up with a lot more clients. And so I needed a lot more people to work for me. So I ended up with offices in uh, Houston, Kansas City, uh, Norcross, Georgia, and of course in San Antonio. Um, and I will tell you one thing, and I think all you guys realize this is, man, you cannot do it without the support of your wife, your husband, significant other, uh, and your family. I mean, you just can't do it. If they're, if they're not behind you on this thing and you're traveling a lot, uh, you're not gonna make it uh, very long. So I was lucky I had that. Uh, I didn't have a whole lot of money to hire extra people or an assistant. And, um, but, you know, somehow between my credit cards and my new clients, it, it worked. It wasn't always easy. So I started uh, Ron Blank and Associates. And then, you know, I, I decided to start other companies uh, that wanted to deal with lead, documentation, health product declarations, uh, doing webinar series. So I started these other companies. And uh, luckily for me, all of them were successful. So at the end of the day, really, my wife still is happy with me. My kids are happy with me. And I have some really uh, successful businesses I'm happy with. And I want to share some of the information on that with you, which is how do you get those products specified? You don't have to go through everything I went through. You don't have to travel as many weeks. But how do you break that code to get the product spec? So some of the programs that I've worked up and, and built strategies for. Um, 
is, is really to get you out of the contractor's office into the architect and design professional's office. So they include what you've got now, probably a lot of you, is AI education courses. You know, I've got a whole team, that's all they do every day is write courses. You know, we've got 20, 20 or 25 courses in there right now in some stage of development with building product manufacturers. If you need that, I've got my information at the end. This isn't a sales thing, but you just call me and I can hook you up with that team. But you know, here's what's happened. If you go down that list that I just talked about, it's like, um, what don't you see on that list? Well, what you don't see is that architectural spec program I talked about. So that's what we're gonna focus on today. How do you get in the architect's office and how do you make this program work for you, this process work for you? So I've got a case study here. I might have some people from Constantino on here. They could tell the story too, but back 2002, 21 years ago, uh, Constantino built a 75,000 square foot headquarters and distribution plant. It was in Houston, Texas. They're from Spain. They wanted to enter the U.S. market. It's the late 90s, so they couldn't figure out when they got here with all these people they had working for them, how to get to the architectural market. It wasn't just like in, in Spain or Europe where people knew their company and it would call Constantino up and get you know stone, quartz surfacing material. They didn't have that here, but they, they hired 35 people to put in an in office in Houston uh, and they didn't have any collateral. They didn't have any catalogs or samples and so one day they called me and they said, hey, I've had two people today, Dennis Rickman said it, that told me to call you because we don't have any samples going out. We don't have any business coming in. We're going to have to cut the company off in the United States. Um, uh, what do we need to do? So the other problem they had is that they didn't have any education programs, obviously, which is a big part of your business. And, and I needed to develop it for them. So um, as Dennis and I sat down and we worked through this for over 20 years, we, we try to reach these goals, which is a goal for you. So they had a great product called Silestone. It's a quartz surfacing material. I was actually the first customer in Texas to put in my office building when I built it. Um, they needed name recognition for not only Costantino, but their, their company, Silestone, their product Silestone. They had no education program. So over the period of years, um, I wrote them 12 uh, continuing education courses. Uh, which helped them get in front of the interior designers mainly was their target and some architects um, to give them credit and also learn about um, Constantino's products. Uh, so they also wanted me to continuously train their sales team and independent reps to work with spec writers. And so I was in Houston a bunch. They would uh, fire all their direct sales reps. I mean, all of them at one time. I think they ha have anywhere between 46 to 60 of them and they would bring in independent reps and then I would have to go down and do training programs. And then two or three years later, they'd, hire, they'd fire all the independent reps and go back to salespeople. And it was a mess with them. Um, they didn't understand the business in the United States from Spain. Some of you work, might work for um, overseas companies and, and they don't get it sometimes. So I was always in this process of one way or another or helping their company grow. So, with the team, what I did for Constantino, what I could do for you or any company is, I used three of my architectural reps to visit 1,500 firms annually. Every year, uh, I'd have these three reps go in and make 500 calls in the biggest firms across the country. And um, like I said, I created uh, 12 continuing ed programs. They were with AIA, some of them were with USGBC credits. Um, I was always working with the sales team. And then I put them in, we, we developed 70 live events nationwide for them, which is our CE Academy where they had rooms full of architects. They would go into New York, Boston, Dallas, uh, Houston, Seattle, Miami. We'd, we'd go in and they would have a room full of architects there for their reps to talk about, as well as the other building product companies that took an hour for their courses. Very successful, um, put them in front of thousands of uh, architects and interior designers, and it turned their business around. So why was it a success for them and why is it gonna be a success for you? Okay. Well, their product specs went up exponentially, right? I mean, it's like they, they literally were getting hundreds and thousands of specs. So that meant that we were sending, having them send out guide specs, three-part guide specs. Uh, the reps were uh, taking out um, uh, sample books and meet and catalogs, meeting with the uh, interior designers and, and, and architects directly. I, I generated probably tens of thousands, but I put down here thousands of leads um, uh, for the people to follow because we would ask the architects what, what uh, project do you have where you can use uh, solid surfacing materials using quartz? And they would tell us, and then I would get their rep, I'd send them a, re 
uh, report either by email or at the end of the week in an Excel document. Hey, these are the guys that want samples. They want you to come by and work on the projects. So you can imagine all those handshakes eye to eye in front of the spec writers. They got a lot of business. So they wanted some bigger projects. So I worked on hotels, commercial projects, uh, educational, pretty large projects. And then at the end, actually, I helped them with their development at Decton, which is their exterior facade business. And when you go like to next, next week to AIA show over in San Francisco, if you go by their booth, they just have big sheets over there uh, of a uh, product I helped them design for exterior uh, facing. Um, so what happened over a period of even start three to five years, they totally dominated the solid surface market in many areas. And uh, there's a lot of competitors out there, I'm telling you. I, I don't have to name them for you, you know who they are. And uh, they didn't like me too much for helping Costantino, but um, within 10 years, we totally crushed our competition in the United States. And actually one of their uh, big competitors uh, this week, uh, they actually pulled out of the US market. I mean, a big, big company pulled out of the US market because Costantino has taken over a billion dollars worth of their business. So anyway, these results are pretty awesome to me. Um, that can be repeated for uh, your company, any company, um, it's just, you know, if you work hard at it, you can take your product to this next level. So just some of the key attributes I always tell people is, as you can read them there, is never give up, take action, mainly get it done, stay focused on getting spec. When you go in the office, some people go into a architect's office, they're not focused, they give a product presentation, they never ask the main question. How do I get in your office specifications? I can tell you, I've gone in with hundreds of reps, they never ask that question and they never get in the specs. You showed them the product, they like it. Hey, give them a three-part spec and have them add it to their master specifications. It's that simple. Be fearless, serve clients, and be unstoppable. So here's one more testimony. You can read that. Um, Wolf Products, Jason Fiora, I talked to him once or twice a week. Um, I've helped them in their product, their projects. Um, help them in their market development. And I think this year they're doing 41 live events with me. Uh, they're doing 12 webinars with me. Um, we're starting up some specification calls for them. And uh, that's, just, that's just what happened for them. Um, it can be real successful if you put the time and money into it. He runs six divisions of the company. He doesn't have time to do all the work. So we do most of the work for him. And um, they actually, at last Christmas, gave him 5% of the company for all of his work. And I'm glad that we were helping get there. Okay, so um, what is the components of this ASP program that we're talking about? Why is it successful in the architect's office? Um, how's it going to get you more opportunities? So, what what does that system what does that system work like? Well, there's a specialist, there's a network, your presentation, what deliverables are you going to give? How are you going to follow up? And how are you going to make the deal? So I made a slide on each one of the components coming up. And here's what happens. Okay, the first part of the program are the, the specialists. So a lot of people tell me they have the best billing product in the world, right? Everybody thinks that or you wouldn't be working for your company. But if you don't show that to the spec writer and you just concentrate on the contractor, you're never gonna get specified, right? So the people that you have out there, which is probably a lot of you are that person, where you're going and calling those AEC firms, um, it's critical you know several things. One of them is that the, one of the best ways to get in these guys is, like I said, get your certification from CSI, CDT, or get a lead certification like a Green Associate or Lead AP, because if you have that on your business card, just think about it, you put it on your business card, they know that you know what you're talking about, and they'll take you in before any other rep that comes in, uh, you're gonna be the guy that gets to go through the door. Okay, the person, which is could be you, that needs to be making this presentation. It's got to have some technical knowledge and they also got to be a good communicator, right? So when they go in, they got to be able to talk not only about, you know, what's on the drawings, if they have to look at the plans or what's, what's in the specifications or how it's going to be detailed out, maybe with BIM. Um, you need to know all that, but you need to have, to have a professional presentation and, and talk about it. So the other thing about it is like every every rep that goes in, it ne really needs to be friendly and make friends with the spec writer. So he wants to see you when you come back and you want you want to be that, I guess the best way to say you want to be a valued member of his team, the go-to person to go to. And the biggest thing you can do probably is not be a salesman, right? Uh, the, good, the good architecture reps don't sell anything, right? 
they educate, they assist, they answer questions for the guy, they come in and do continuing education programs at lunch. They're not in there to sell anything because the architect's not buying anything, the contractor's buying it, so just educate them to specify it correctly. So the other thing is, is um, you gotta be honest, you gotta be ethical. Um, and man, if you need anything, you need to be persistent, right? If you're not, if you're not calling on that architect, uh, probably every, at least every six months for the average architect and just dropping by and find out what projects he's got on the board and how you can help, you're probably wasting your time with him. Um, and you need to have an open mind about, about learning new, new things about your products and how the competition works. Uh, you know, uh, just, just be willing to learn all these new things. So the bottom line, line really is for our companies to have the best people in the industry presenting the products. These people have to know their competition and fight against them in a positive way, not a negative way. They need to invest um, the money. They need to invest their money and, and programs are going to work. There's a lot of people that have programs that aren't working because they're not following some of the rules that we talked about here earlier. So, um, and invest in good people, make sure you have the right person in the right seat there and uh, have a really high performing program. So the next um, component, I guess you call it, that we're going to discuss is the network. So the network is really a lot of things that you're seeing there. It's, it's um, all of your reps, it's your databases that you have on the architects, um, on your products. It's all the admin personnel in your company that help you, follow-up procedures, uh, working with social media, which is huge. In our company, we have, we're on LinkedIn and Facebook like instantly every day. Um, what are the schedules for setting up for your product reps? Um, why are they going there? What products are they representing? Uh, what's the ROI? What's your return on investment when you, when you have somebody going out there and calling? Are they really bringing specs in? Um, are they looking for new AEC firms when they go in? Like you're walking down the hall in an office building and you see a new a AEC firm, architect firm you haven't called on before, just stop in there and find out what's going on with them, right? What projects they have going, talk to the spec writer, project architect for a minute, put them in your database. Uh, what are your follow-up procedures? All those things, okay? So all the product reps, um, they're product reps because they are networkers, right? So just build those relationships with the spec writers through your office visits, uh, lunch and learns. Um, lunch and learns are a whole other topic. I could talk about half an hour about how to how to do that uh, a little bit better. Um, trade shows, uh, we go to every major trade show, uh, save those leads. Some of them are just people kicking tires, right? You're, they're, you're not, they're not gonna ever um, use your product probably. Uh, they may be uh, in, in a kind of in industry where they can't, but there's a lot of good trade show Needs to come in that you do need to follow up. And one of the big things I recommend recommend is, um, uh, um, what do I say, uh, training events in your company where you can all get together and talk about how you, you and the other reps about how you can do the job better, um, work on your social networking. So really in the network, there's a whole lot of people um, and, and look at it as like, it's like I tell my reps, I want to see an outcome. I want to see some numbers, an outcome. I don't, I don't want to see people doing just activities and staying busy. I've got, I can tell you, I've got one my guy in my company that's soon to change that I'm not happy because he can't show me the numbers, right? He's, he acts busy every day, but at the end of the day, he doesn't have the numbers or the number of calls he should be making to help. So you, you have to make sure also that the rep you're working with is the right person in the right seat. Okay. So, um, You've got the best reps, you're the best rep in the country and your industry. And what, what about the presentation, the deliverables that you have to have? Um, and what I'm talking about on this, it's a proprietary presentation. It's not your continuing net program. It's focused on your best products or high selling products. In the old days, uh, and some of you probably still use this, is we'd go in with a lender, like a leather binder. I'd have uh, project photos, I'd have samples. I'd let them handle those, look at them. Um, they, they see what you have and it was kind of like, uh, passing samples around and trying to get in the specs. And uh, a lot of times these were bad presentations, actually, they didn't get to the point. And, uh, then we started using computers, which you had to recharge all the time. They didn't work out. Now the iPads and stuff, uh, comp the laptops we use are better. Um, I always told my guys, I said, I think I'm dying from, uh, uh, death by PowerPoint. You know, that's a common experience. And the architect's offices is like um, 
um, quit using PowerPoint so much and use more proprietary software and communicate. Um, our company is a huge Apple developer. We develop interactive presentations for manufacturers across the world. Um, we've been we've had our own presentation software for probably 12 years now. So here's what's happened in in your presentations, right? And I'm talking about specific product presentation. I want you to ask yourself when you go in the big fallacy of people going to make architectural calls. Just they think that they just go in and show this stuff off and magically their product's gonna start appearing in project specifications, not gonna happen. So one, what is your visit for? What's your goal going in? Hey, I'm gonna show them this product. I'm gonna to try to get it specified on this uh, project that Hurdy's got, and I am gonna ask for the, uh, to be put in an office spec specification when I leave. And, and, and that's gonna be the bottom line for you, right? If you get that done, um, you won the game. So a lot of people don't know enough about their product. They just kind of skim over the top. They don't even have answers for some of the questions a spec writer is going to ask. So uh, make your presentation easy to understand. Uh, another one is um, being participatory. Is I call it engaging with the spec writer, right? It's really like a conversation. I, I, I go into so many of these reps to train them, and they just it's they're like um, it's like uh, reading off a computer screen, right? It's like this product is good. It comes in black, red, and white, or whatever. It's the most boring thing I've ever heard in my life. And uh, the architect doesn't get to talk, so he doesn't specify you, right? And he doesn't want to see you again. But if you start asking them questions like, uh, well, how would you use this on an educational uh, project? And um, what do you see as an application uh, for this where the brick meets the aluminum? Whatever it is, you ask him a question, engage with him, get him to talk, find out what he wants, and then you're in the specs. So that's another thing. Let them steer the conversation. Let them go anywhere they want. You're not, you're not, you're not the guy that's gonna try to demand they go a certain way. Let them tell you what they want. Ask them what they're working on, what are the type of projects. And one of the biggest things I always ran into is respecting their time. Sometimes they'll tell you, come in, hey, I'll give you five minutes. Hey, when five minutes is up, you say, hey, do you still have time to go over the rest of these products? They're always gonna give you the time, 90% of the time, right? But if he says, look, I got a dead stop in 15 minutes, stop in 15 minutes or you'll never get back in the door. And my last thing is, is I always ask that the questions about getting the offer of master specs. And so a lot of people think this is something you should do when you go in. Okay, that's great. But let me tell you something. I, I'll call them must do's. I tell my people, you must do every one of these uh, seven things on the screen. You've got to do that. So if you shut your eyes and you ask yourself, hey, am I doing these things? Am I, am, am I doing these things? And if you are, you're always going to be successful. Okay, so the deliverables. What do these guys ask for at the time? I can tell you I've made 15,000 architectural calls in my lifetime all over this country, and I wrote down what they usually ask for before you get out of there. In your follow-up process, which is the next slide, we're going to talk about some of these things, but what deliverables as a rep do you need to provide to this design professional? Well, all the deliverables these days start out with three-part guide specs. You have to have a really professionally written three-part guide spec that's accurate, ethical, um, that's written by somebody that knows what they're doing. So there's a lot of great spec writers. If you want to find one, go to skip.org, scip.org, Specification Consultants and Independent Practice. You can call me. I've got two or three that write hundreds and thousands of specs for my companies every year, but have some really good guide specs because they take that, they go to that project uh, section, CSI section, they take your spec and they can annotate it and they can change it to their, their project and they'll drop that in every time over just a generic spec to have. Okay, number two, you wanna have samples that you can pass around. Let them see it, feel it, let them believe in the, in, the, in the product. I see some horrible samples going that have been used a thousand times. You need to throw them away. You need to go on with something fresh. Okay, technical literature. Man, if you don't have that, you're dead, right? Especially when you come to lead documentation. Drawing details, gotta have your CAD drawings available mainly online. BIM is the big, it's the, it's, it's the big girl in the room right now. Uh, just gave work with um, a RIM, which was BSD. I worked with Matt. We just gave a big presentation on BIM for about an hour. And it's amazing how using those BIM objects now, they can actually pull in the specifications with them. The architect drops them in on the plans. The specifications get written around them. It makes that, the job so much easier. So make sure that some company, there's a lot, there's two or three really good companies out there. Call me if you don't have one. BIM objects is the one we use. Is like, use them. Use them to get your BIM objects. If you don't have them, you're gonna lose a lot of work. 
lead documentation. Okay. A lot of people think about this. A lot of people think architects are the only people they need to talk to, right? You're an architectural rep. That's your title. Okay. The other group that's out there is the lead green associates and lead APs, right? So how many architects are there in the United States? There's roughly 120,000 architects. I've got them in my database. I've got their information, right? 90,000 of those people get an email from me with my educational stuff I'm doing that week every single Monday. Okay. And you can be on there too if you want to. You just got to call me about your courses and stuff. But what I'm saying is there's 220,000 lead professionals out there and the APs need 30 hours. The Green Associates need 15 hours every two years. Multiply that out. That's like 5 million credits those people need a year. Where are they going to get them? They got to have a GBCI course, right? A US GBC course. Their educational arm is GBCI. We, we send thousands of credits in every day for the lead courses that we give for online. People are giving them face-to-face. -face, uh, it's lunch and learns. So don't forget about the lead people. Have your lead documentation in place. Right now, we're in lead 4.1. In September, not too far down the line, uh, lead is going to vote on 5.0. It's all brand new. There's two new more material and resource credits that you can get that you don't know about. There won't be in your lead documentation until you get them put in there. If you need any information on that, I'm going to have my information. Then call me. I'll tell you what those lead credits are. I'll tell you how to get them written. And I'll tell you how to get them in your lead documentation so that when you count them out to the lead architects, 220,000 of them are lead professionals, you're going to get the job every single time because your 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 um, competitors aren't going to have them on their lead sheets. Okay. Also, make sure on, on health product declarations, environmental product declarations, uh, any, any kind of the certification uh, programs, you have those documents if you have them. Especially health product declarations. Every every lead project that goes out is you're going to have to have an HPD or health product declaration. They're not expensive to get done. There's no hocus, hocus pocus to it. You go to companies like an uh, Elixir Environmental or one of the seven companies worldwide that write those for you. And for a few thousand dollars, you can get this document that just takes you right in the front door of every lead professional. So I'm going to say when you look down that list, if you're lacking any of these, these are essential tools you have to have. You just uh, send me an email. Hey, Ron, uh, who do I work with on BIM? Who can do my lead documentation? Who can write three guard part specs for me? And it doesn't cost anything. I'll give you some names of people you can talk to that that we use and, um, and and can help you get through that um, to those roadblocks and not having them. Okay, so your follow-up, your deliverables, um, really the follow-up process is important because a, a bunch of you are gonna go in and you're gonna get you're gonna get somebody to ask you a question you don't know, right? It's like, you're supposed to know, but you're not gonna know. I've had it happen a lot of times because a lot of times I just get surface training from manufacturers. And the guy says, well, how do you, how do you make that aluminum extrusion fit up against this glass? What is the connection there? Well, Mr. Architect, I don't have that answer for you. That's something that one of their engineers or salespeople is going to have to explain to you. So is it okay if I have PPG Glass get in touch with you and they can help you with that detail or give you a, a BIM object to drop in your plants? Yes, okay. So you've got to answer the technical questions. You so also have those deliverables we talked to about in the previous slides, but never BS. Uh, an architect that you have an answer that you don't have because if he finds out you really didn't tell him the truth you're never going to get back in the door right the other thing I love more than anything probably is coordinating lunch and learns and getting people in some aspect either online or lunch and learn in front of the uh, architects it's very difficult today as you know um, uh, I want to say except for the big firms like HK Gensler Perkins and Will you know uh, those people who have uh, hundreds of, arc, uh, of uh, building product manufacturers trying to get their architects every year, and they schedule them way in advance. A lot of the medium-sized firms and the small firms of five architects are left. That's that 60% of the architectural database. They're home. You don't go into their home to make presentations, right? So um, you need to set up those when you can. If you need any help on in your area, like say, hey, I'm going to Chicago, and I'd like to have some lunch and learn set up. Can you give me five or ten firms that will, you know, in, in some context, I'll give you that. It doesn't cost you anything. Just let me know. I'll help you get in the front door with those people. Okay, so another thing is sometimes you go in and they say, hey, uh, I had one in Cleveland one time. The architect I went in, again, it was a curtain wall system, and the guy said, the PPG glass guy hasn't gotten in touch with me or curtain wall 
guy hasn't gotten in. I'm doing a courthouse. I had this huge expense of glass on the front on the entrance and I'm not getting any help. OK, so I get in touch with uh, the top people and of course they get their rep over there. But that's what I call an additional spec meeting, right? They want to have you come in or your team come in and talk to them how to solve a problem that they've got their own plans, right? It's too wide, it's too big, it's the wrong color, whatever. And then once you hand that off to them, you're automatically in the specs. So uh, I'm gonna, I, I, that's like a big piece of pie, right? I'm gonna put the last slice or in a puzzle, I'm gonna give you the last piece of the puzzle now, the deal. So as we talked about on the first slide, you know, these designers, interior designers, engineers, architects, lead people, they, they, they're they not gonna give you a purchase order. So really people say sometimes uh, that haven't been in the business say, well, what is that really, what is that about? Well, the purchase order really, it's a purchasing contract, right? If you think about it. And it, it's similar to the construction uh, contract, but it's a, it, it's an offer to, to, the, um, to the contractor to supply so much material for a certain price. And those got, goods have got to be delivered. So that's what a purchase order is. I think all of you know that. And so when you get through with the contractor and the architect and you're specified, that's what it's all about because once you're specified, you're going to be in the project most of the time. But your work, it's not actually all done yet because what you have to do is you have to ensure that that product, after it gets specified, your pricing gets to the to the bidding of the pricing process with the contractor. So. You can you can get that through uh, Dodge Lead, CMD, those kind of those kind of, kind of lead services. Who are the contractors bidding it, and, and get into that process um, uh, before it goes out to bid, so so that um, so you get in the job, right? Because if you're if if your price is right, you got the lowest bid. Most of the time, you're going to get the job for your product spec. So the other big thing, which is another thing I can talk about half a minute, uh, I mean probably half a minute, half an hour about, is product substitution. So You've always got to be able to defend your product against your competitors, right? So um, most of the time it's called uh, value engineering. You've run up against it with your competitors as they try to substitute a cheaper product, right? Uh, it may have the right uh, same UL number or ASTM number, but in the project system, uh, it could be it could, their product could cause problems. It, and I've seen this where uh, some of the architects get real uh, ingenious and they try to use an indoor product for an outdoor use, right? So the first thing you see when you read their spec and you're trying to bid against it, it's like, you need to go to that architect and be honest with him and say, hey, look, you, you specified either my competitor's product or my product uh, on an exterior and it's an interior job. The finish isn't gonna hold up, it's gonna fail and you're gonna be his friend forever. So watch all the substitutions coming in at the last minute so that you can combat against them. Yeah, because the last thing you want is a callback or have to go to a job site meeting where your product didn't work um, or your competitor's product didn't work. So really, when it's all over, you just start start all over again, right? Every new call in the architect's office is a new, new way to start, right? It's a new beginning. So uh, let's talk about using some of these uh, basic steps, I call them, uh, to be successful in the, in the market. So I think I've told you five different deals here that you can think about, contemplate, um, use these steps to succeed. So in your mind, all you've got to be thinking about after this is, look, how am I going to implement this? So what what really do you think, if you could think of one thing in the marketplace that's keeping you from getting your product specified, what is it? Is it, is it your competitor? Is it because you're not making enough architectural calls? It's like uh, most of the peop most of the professional architectural reps out there are making at least 100 calls a year. We'll talk about that in a minute. It's really easy to do that. Um, that's how I started my company, just making those calls. Uh, so it's kind of, I give you a template here for the long journey that you're going through. So uh, I guess you have to ask yourself, if I use these tools, am I going to be successful? And, and you are going to be successful if you do these things that we talked about. Okay. So be a little excited about um, the things we discussed. Um, I know a lot of you are probably overwhelmed. Probably a bunch of you, your pencil has run out, writing us down notes. Um, so I'm gonna talk about how to make your job easier here for a few minutes and give you a special offer. So, you know, that's my company. This is what we've done for 38 years now is the architectural spec program I developed. And so we have people that like your companies that either don't have enough architectural reps, they only have offices in certain parts of the uh, country, 
or they just don't have an architectural rep program in place and they hire me to do that. So how does that program work? So a lot of times we're hired to be an, a, a complement or, or to supplement a company that say like they have two managers, they have an Eastern manager and a Western manager. Obviously you're not gonna be able to call on 120,000 or even 150 or 20,000 architects in a year. And they want that extra coverage, so we just complement what they do. We turn all the leads over to the regular reps to follow up on, but we have to go in and develop those project leads. So what happens? So in the ASP program, we we develop, uh, we go nationwide, everywhere from Miami to Portland to New York City to uh, Miami to San Francisco, wherever it is, that's where we go and make these calls. We have 10 di different regions you can choose from, because some of the companies, to be honest with you, um, they um they um there are only certain parts of the country like acme brick i only have the southwest for them that's where they produce a brick they've been my client for like since the beginning and i can only do like one region for them because that's that's all they want to go out to they can't ship brick across the united states that's okay i can help them in the area they want um the other thing is that we always get from the architect a list of the current projects and the good thing about this is like we're way ahead of dodge or cmd anybody else because we're in the architect's office when they're really in the beginning preliminary design stages, the planning stages. They trust us. We've been working with them for 40 years. We can get that information. We can say, John Smith, HOK, Dallas. Here's a phone number. Here's an email. Um, he's working on uh, concrete floor polishing right now. That's the product you specify. It's like you need to get in touch with him right now. He wants to talk to you about putting the right product down. That's the kind of leads you get. You get a leads, leads and uh, how to follow up with them. And that's the hot leads go directly to you. If a guy says, I need to talk to him right away, we're gonna get we're gonna get with you and you can respond. Because if you don't respond quickly, right, they're gonna just move on to a competitor. So all these products we have, these are some of my products that have, have been successful through the years. Cosentino, Scranton, Eagle Roofing, Al Pollock, and really hundreds of more. We do like two or three hundred products just on our continuing education program. But we start with them. I'm working with another company. I just been working with them this week. Um, we gave a, a seminar uh, last week. It's called the Spectrum and Summit. If you ever want to go to that, you can just email me. We had building product manufacturers come in from the management side and the marketing manager, sales managers. We went through a two-day program, like I'm, we're talking about here, of how to do this. We gave them my book, and it's um, it's a program that that you might want to attend. Uh, that's a little bit higher level than this, but we helped all these companies. Okay, so what does this program do for you? Like I said, it works for every building product. It works for small companies. I have $2 million of sales companies to billions of dollars of sales in companies that work with all company sizes. It's very good for manufacturers that are starting out or, or at least just starting some kind of outreach to architects. Um, there are some manufacturers that have been around for a long time. I can tell you um, a long time and they hire us because they just need extra support in the field. They can't do it all. It's cost effective because the fees are so low. And the main thing is it helps a, a lead pipeline for you to follow up on where you can literally get hundreds of leads on projects every month in these reports that we send you that you would have never known about because they haven't come out for bid yet. So um, when I first started out in this construction business, um, you know, I did run into this low roadblock I talked to you about. I didn't know how to get products specified. I created this ASP program myself. I spent years in the field. Um, you can imagine after 10 or 15,000 calls around the country uh, perfecting the program, I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to make this specification tool work. And so I don't want you to re recreate the wheel. I don't want you to have to go from the beginning and say, hey, I'm going to not have all these tools. I'm not going to have all these things that can work for me. So uh, according to a lot of our clients, I've got a lot of testimonials I could show you. It's like, this is really one of the best programs in the industry to get your product spec. So I want you to consider that. So Really, again, it work, can work for your product, any product. You'll get more spec opportunities. The good thing about it on this one is, is you don't need any technical or coding experience, right? So you don't have to be an Apple developer to, to develop your presentation. We do that. We take all the heavy lifting for that. I'll make you the best uh, cutting edge presentation for your products that you've ever seen that you can take out every day in the field. Um, I'm gonna build a pipeline of projects for, your, for, for the reps. And I'm going to give you all kinds of ROI uh, data and metrics on the firms that you want. You say, hey, Ron, um, Perkins and Will in uh, Kansas City, what can you tell me about? Come and say, okay, look, this is the type of projects they do in that office. 
this is a spec writer saying this is a continuing education contract this is two or three of the project architects this is spec writer's name everything that you're going to need to be successful when you go in there what current projects do they have that they were working on the last time we went in all this stuff that you're not going to get from anybody else i've got it in my database it just takes a call just think about it when you're going in to see somebody you have every piece of ammunition that you ever need to get in a specification so one of the things i want you to think about is um some bad habits i'm just going to go into this for a minute that i've seen and and watching hundreds of presentations by product reps it's like you, you when you go in i guess the best thing to say is these are these are some things you can think about being proactive right be positive uh and one thing is don't be negative about your competitors right there everyone is comp as passionate about your products um lead by example invest in winning programs all these things that you see here and especially don't quit on yourself if you don't get that spec just think your competitor got it just go back for the next job right get in the next project don't give up so if you had answer this question if you had a successful specification program today and you could reach these top 700 architectural firms in the country how much would that be worth to you how much would it be worth to get thousands of leads to have someone on my team, an architect, talking to you, thousands of architects possibly for you during the course of the year. And we can take you step by step through every process that you could ever have on who to call on and any firm you want to know about and what projects they're working on, invaluable information. What if we gave you all these different tools to give you everything you need to succeed? It comes down to that fork in the road, right? So the first option is what a lot of people do, they don't do anything. They get off the phone, they forget about it. They might take some of the tips and they might utilize some of the tips. Hey, hey, they can do nothing, right? And nothing, nothing changes for them. And if you if you don't change, it's just like Einstein said, if you if you do the same thing time after time, it's not going to change, then you're going to be in the same boat next year. So the section off section, second option, tongue tied, um, is just take a leap of faith, right? Invest in getting your product specs, spend the money. Or, you know, just call me. I'll give you a bunch of free tips for nothing. But if you spend the money, my whole team's working for you. It's, it's worked for hundreds of other companies. One thing you're going to lose is a bunch of stress. I can tell you, when you have somebody out there every day making these calls for you, it takes the stress off of you to have to do that. And you can invest your time in doing contractor sales or something else that's going to make your money. And you have more time on your hands. So I would say if you want to get specified, I go with number two, just take that leap of space, faith. So we're at the end here. The good news is remember that when we started, I told you I was struggling how to get product spec right. I didn't have 40 years of spec knowledge. I didn't have the experience I do now that built the spec program. I didn't have any tools. And now I have those tools and programs. I can help get people to understand how to get the product spec. I'm trying to share those with you today. I, want, I hope I could share with them for 20, 30 years in the future. And the good news is that you get to make that choice. You get to choose what you want to be. You can either go down that road of success or you can keep going maybe the way you're going, unless you're really super successful and you should be teaching me. It's like, go down the road that's going to give you the most success. So here's my last slide. I appreciate you spending your time with me today, uh, learning how to get your product specified. I've got a big team of people sitting there from people that design continuing education courses that give uh, live events, that give webinars. We have the best webinar program in the country, uh, the architects that make the spec calls. I have all these people that are just waiting to work with you. 